All right, today we're gonna to look at two ways to bring in stock data to Tableau and graph it. So we can set the stage for a lot of the social media and other data we'll be looking at later, uh, but wanna find a couple ways to bring in what's happening with a specific company and see how we can graph it. So with that, we're gonna pop on over to our browser and see the end result there, but we're going to look at this awesome tool. So Google Finance posted this and uh, Blake here on Twitter, um, posted this cool little gif of it so i noticed a new way to get data so i've been using yahoo finance for a long time because it is a really easy way to download a lot of historical data and it does go a little bit farther back than this google example but we will do it both ways and go from there so i'm going to post this link in the description but it's a google docs link which you can go ahead and click and it will pop open this modal that you'll see that will ask you if you want to copy it into your google account so copy document, okay, make a copy. And this will come up. It's gonna struggle a little bit for me since I'm trying to record this video and using every bit of my laptop's GPU to do it, as well as this trying to figure out everything in the cloud. But it's a super simple sheet. There's only two things you need to enter. One is the ticker symbol. So it starts with Google, but today I'm more interested in Tesla. So Tesla stock. It's got a lot of moving going on lately, and a lot of things are happening in the EV market with all the manufacturers like GM and Ford and new ones like Rivian and Lucid Air and stuff like that. So I'm kind of interested in what is happening with Tesla given these new competitors in the market. So the ticker symbol is TSLA. If you don't know what ticker symbol is for your company, you want to get it precise because there's a lot of uh, ticker symbols that sound kind of similar. So like you want to make sure you buy the right Apple stock and not some other Apple company, for example. Um, so Google that, or we'll be using Yahoo Finance later, which has that built in. Uh, and you can change this for different options. I'm going to go for more data than less because I can always filter it out in Tableau or just focus on the month or year that I want in that data. So in this case, more is better. This is by the day. So it has all of the daily data, um, which we'll need to look at later. So remember that part, but all right. So it has this graph already with the uh, change in the stock price and the percent change in the stock price and a pretty cool graph and really important data. So the total market cap is the share price multiplied by the number of outstanding shares. So that's what the company is worth in the eyes of investors that are thinking of the future cash flows that are coming to that company. So that is different than the total sales and total uh, revenue of the company and certainly different than the profit which is those sales and revenues minus the costs. Uh, so just keep those things in mind that those are very different things. So in the price to earnings ratio, if you do get into investments, super important, kind of gives you a gauge of how overpriced it is or not. And that is very different per the type of uh, industry you are in. So obviously tech is going to have a lot higher price to earnings ratio, but all we are looking at here is the raw data that we want to get and these data field columns are really important. We want to click in that first B27 area and I'm going to click shift on my keyboard and uh, scroll down to the very bottom. There are also a ton of shortcut keys. If you check out two of my favorite accounts, uh, Miss Excel on TikTok and Excel Dictionary on Instagram, they have a lot of those shortcut keys. If you become a, a investment banker or you're in Excel all the time for some reason, um, those are super helpful. Those will get you a few more hours of sleep at night, but we've got this highlighted and now you want to control C if you're on a PC or command C if you're on a Mac or you can do edit copy on the menu. And so you have that there. And what we're gonna do is file, new, spreadsheet, uh, or you could open Excel and do the same thing as well. Instead of Google, it will work just as well. And once it loads, I'm going to do control V or command V, but you'll notice something might not quite work right. So what it did in this case was take the formulas that were on that other page and pasted the formulas and we don't want that because they are referencing things that are not on our page so instead of that you can go edit paste special because it's special and values only we just want the numbers we don't want any of that fancy stuff and we are going to call this tesla stock price all right so we are going to go to file Download Microsoft Excel.slx, click that, and save it in a safe folder, not in your downloads folder, <laughs> even though that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, save these all in a raw data file 
place where you access for all your Tableau project stuff and keep it all there and you should be good to go so it doesn't get cleared out and downloads are corrupted or anything like that. So this is pretty perfect. We've got the uh, row one with all the data column field titles and all of the data set up and it looks pretty good. So we don't really need to open it up in Excel and edit it before we head into Tableau. This is ready to rock. So I'm just gonna head straight to Tableau and let me switch sources here. All right, so we should be popped over to Tableau, and I'm gonna do a, um, oh yeah, so in Tableau, I've been looking at some statistic data uh, this afternoon, I was really excited looking at all the new things happening in the EV market, and I had a question on, you know, what happened over the last two years, because Tesla had a huge early lead with the Model S, like, starting to sell pretty decently in, like, 2010, and I guess that's 12 years ago now, um, but in the last couple of years, you know, BMW and Mercedes and GM and Ford and now Rivian and Lucid Air are really uh, kicking into gear. So what's happened just in the last two or three years? Uh, what I wanted to know is uh, the 2020 and 2021 change now that we're in 2022. So what was the delta? What was the difference? And what percentage differences? So you'll see I've got here at the top BMW <laughs> had a huge jump from not that much in 2020, like 300,000 vehicles, 300,000. I don't know if that's right. I, I want to see uh, what's going on. Okay, so there's a 63,000 change, which is a 21% change. Sounds pretty decent. I definitely want to validate this data later, um, but I did pull it from Statista, and uh, this does kind of put a, a bit of a picture together on the data story. It does look like GM maybe because the Bolt and some of those others were discontinued and the new ones are um, not quite coming to market yet. Uh, so maybe that's why it's a bit lower now, and this could look entirely different in about a year. So pretty interesting there, but we want to graph our stock data. So what we want to go to is data, new data source, open up Microsoft Excel, and we're going to pick that Tesla stock price data. Here it is. So now we're on our data source tab on the lower left. Looks like date came in correctly as a date. So that's good news. And all of our numbers look like numbers. So like I said, this one's pretty straightforward and Tableau had no problem figuring that out going to go to a new sheet. We can now bring in date. So, and remember, you can rename these. And I really don't think anything professional should have stuff like sheet one in it. So you can go ahead and clear that up, rename it to something that makes sense. And I'm going to bring in the date here. So it's bringing it in by year. And what I want to do is right click and change it to exact date. And we want to graph really just two things. I don't want to graph every type of a stock price. I just want to know what the maybe the high for the day was. Uh, and here it is. So that was super fast. Um, one thing to think about, too, is we have daily data. So if I were to change this to a month, notice the stock price here is, you know, somewhere around, you know, zero to thirteen hundred dollars which is accurate that's what the tesla stock price is but if i change date to month if i want to see this uh kind of trend over a month it's saying forty thousand so the price was not forty thousand dollars what you want to do is uh change this to instead of a sum so right clicking on that uh, measure change it to an average and now you've got the average over that time frame and somehow I got switched to continuous, but so this is really more of what it's what it's uh, doing there, uh, like this. So you can change it to quarterly, and now those little ups and downs of the day, day to day. Maybe you don't really need to know that. Maybe you're just trying to look at the trend over time. So quarterly to match their quarterly results is actually probably the view you would want to use in a lot of these finance situations, unless you were talking about something specific, maybe a recall, maybe a new product announcement that was in between quarters and stuff like that. That's kind of a different story. So it depends on the context that you're doing. But uh, make sure you choose a date range that makes sense for what you want and change it to this. So it could be that view or that view. So one thing we can have a little fun with, maybe we use that view, uh, is adding one more thing in. So volume, I'm gonna drop on color in the marks tab. And I'm, I can also edit these things as well. So I'm gonna change that to, let's call it trading volume. 
So that's the number of shares exchanged. So it could be, you know, a lot of energy around getting out of a stock or a lot of energy around getting in um, as the price goes up and down. Uh, so it's not necessarily good or bad. It just shows a lot of activity around it. Uh, so it does uh, tend to, you know, increase when things are, uh, you know, really e like exciting, I guess is a lot, for lack of a better term in the market. So I'm going to increase the size of that uh, line so you can see it a little bit better uh, and see where there might be some interesting points. So let's get out of the same color as well. So instead of the default blue, I'll always change it to something intentional. I don't know for Tesla what, it, what a good one would be. I don't know, gray is kind of boring. You could go financial style is like red, black, and diverging. Like, you know, red for negative, black for positive on the stock price. Um, maybe just go for a simple thing like that. All right, so now you can see this. So if I was doing a data analysis, I'd be like, what happened on December 23rd, 2020? So you could look at social media posts, you could look at PR releases, all sorts of stuff like that. But I already have some interesting points that I would discover. And then later on, if I found out something was interesting there, I can right click on that, click annotate, mark. You can do all sorts of stuff with this. You could say, thing happened, and then describe it. And you can even, uh, it gives you these, uh, the variables there. You don't have to say date and then date, uh, but you can change that up. Uh, and you can write it as more human sounding as you would like. Uh, and you can also right click on that and click format and choose uh, different kinds of uh, formatting as well. So um, you can even make very rounded corners. So the thing happened there. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the axes a little bit. So I know what those are. Like I said, date is uh, pretty obvious. And there's a dog in my hotel, apparently. Uh, so <laughs> who knows? All right, you can also right click on these stock prices because they are prices, it is a currency, and click format. And we are in the axis. So pane is what's in the middle, like a window pane, and the axis is the stuff on the sides. And so this right now is just regular numbers. Let's do current uh, currency custom. And I don't need to know the cents for the stock. Uh, that's fine. So we can just do two and close that out. And so let's call this uh, Tesla stock price 2019 to 2021. I mean, it's, I guess 2022, but it's a uh, year to date, just not too far into uh, 2022. But we've got a pretty decent graph going there. All right, so one more way to do this, and we will switch back over to our browser in a second. And we are going to head on over to Yahoo Finance. So in Yahoo Finance, this is kind of the old school way of doing it, but it's not too bad either because we're going to get a lot more data uh, and it's super easy as well. And it does have a little search here. So interesting, Facebook, Spotify, I saw it trending, a lot of stuff happening in the news there. Uh, you can choose Tesla again. Um, yeah, let's just use Tesla again. Let's see what it is. Or actually, we already have Tesla. Maybe we could do Rivian Automotive is still here. So yeah, all right. So this is our screen. You can see a lot of stuff similar to the Google one. It's got a little few more advanced features here and a lot more metrics, but we want to go to this tab that says historical data because we want to pull it into our own Tableau. And now you've got some options here. It just has February 2nd for today. I'm going to do max. Uh, they went to an IPO in November, so it's not that long ago. Uh, you could end up pulling like IBM or something like that. You've got a lot of data uh, there, so we're gonna go daily uh, is fine. You could do this other stuff, but we can change that in Tableau. So the more data, the better. We want daily, data for daily. <laughs> and then apply and download. And we're gonna call that Rivian stock price or something, and it's going to save it as a CSV. So that's important to know because when you bring it in, you need to know if it's a CSV, comma separated file, or a Excel file. All right, so we have Rivian, and I'm going to switch back over to Tableau, and we are going to do a data, new data source, 
And we can't do Excel this time. You have to click More and find your CSV. We've got Rivian coming in and double checking. Date is a date, so you can tell with that little icon. That's great. And the rest are numbers again. So easy going for this type of data. And we'll do a new worksheet and make sure we're selected with the Rivian data. And we've got date here again. Kind of right click on that year. I'm going to change that to exact dates. Bring in our, what do we do for Tesla? The high? Yeah, the high. All right. So let's bring in the high. And then right click on that. And we're going to go ahead and change that to average for stock so we make sure it makes sense. Again, we don't want it to add it all up. So all of the days of January shouldn't add up to a, you know, $40,000 stock price. It should be around the, you know, the 100 to 180 here and format axis. And we're going to go currency custom again, drop that to zero decimal places, clean up the date, double click that axis again, maybe make the line a little thicker. Um, obviously, depending on your presentation, whether it's print in a newspaper, where, wherever, double click tab, call it Rivian, I guess. Stock price. Um, maybe we'll call this one IPO to present or IPO to Feb to 2022. Of course, always update the formatting later. Give that a go. And we can drop the volume on color again. And so obviously they're going to have a lot of interest in that in the IPO range. It's gone a little bit lower since the IPO as the realities of the supply chain crisis and uh, even just scaling and production for a brand new brand and all of the production challenges that go with that. Cool. All right, so we are pretty much done with what I wanted to do today, but I'm going to add a couple things here to check out. So I'm going to right click on the Tesla one and duplicate that. And so this Rivian really kicked off on the IPO on November 10th. So what I can do on this duplicated version of the Tableau thing, I'm going to remove that there. I'm going to control click date, drop it into filter. So I'm still showing it, but I'm going to filter on a date. And I'm going to change that to uh, 11, okay, 11, 10, 2021, and click apply. All right, so now we have uh, pretty comparable uh, date ranges uh, for both. And also, this is something to talk about too. So it's all kind of scrunched up there, and there's like kind of a debate on whether. Uh, axes that start at zero are best. They're more accurate like that. Uh, we could also, because it's so high up and scrunched there and you want to see the difference, I could start this at 800. I do want to be careful with my viewers um, that they know that that is what it's starting at uh, because this looks like almost near zero and it's actually at 858. So you have to be a little bit careful, but I also want to see the subtle things that are happening um, between those times. So I know that like, oh, maybe something happened here uh, at the end of November, that was just a short little blip, and that wasn't as obvious on the previous way looking at it. So now that I've got them both there together, I can actually uh, add them to a dashboard, and you can get a little side-by-side -side view of them, or top and bottom. How about that? So let's call this Rivian versus Tesla. So obviously Tesla is still 10x the price of Rivian, but you can see the trends. So are there, you know, patterns that they both are observing or are they completely independent? So a lot of fun things to explore here on EV vehicles and beyond, but just getting going with some stock data in Tableau and we will connect next time. So thanks everyone for stopping by.